If you ask us, existence started with a big bang, and humanity prevailed with fire. It sounds like quite a statement to make, but think about it. How different would life on Earth be like for humans sans fire? No cooking, no warmth, no light, a lot of predators, no a lot of things. It's safe to say that the first true technical innovation that would carve the path of humanity as we know it today is fire. Sure, now we've got electricity, internet, and so we are far from regarding fire as the best invention of our times. In fact, we're at the point where we're fearing that our microwave may one day heat up one too many pre-cooked meals and rebel against us. Check out our video on AI technology if you want to learn more. But we had to start somewhere, right? So how did fire shape humanity? How did we manage to tame it? How did controlling it evolve into the technology we have nowadays? You're watching Explore Mode and today we're diving into fire and how taming it changed humanity forever. Let's start with the beginning. How did we manage to control fire? Well, this question is hard to answer. First of all, it didn't just happen. And second of all, there were different types of human ancestors in different parts of the world that tamed fire at arguably different times. But let's start with the taming. In order to make fire, early humans had to see it first, to know what it was, meaning they had to be in a natural environment where fire would be possible. So, ice-cold tundras and humid rainforests are not exactly fire-taming friendly habitats. This is why it is thought that the first contact with fire happened in dry grasslands. Second of all, a lot of experts on the topic have different timelines when it comes to when exactly humans started to make their own fires. So, to say that an exact date of when fire taming occurred is debatable is an understatement. According to Harvard anthropologist Richard Wrangham, fire was tamed around 1.8 million years ago. However, while there is archaeological evidence of fire dated 1.6 million years ago in Kenya, the problem is researchers don't know if this was a natural fire or one made by humans. Will Robrokes of Leiden University in the Netherlands and Paula Villa of the University of Colorado Museum both found evidence showing that European Neanderthals were creating their own fires not too long ago, by which we mean around 400,000 to 300,000 years ago. But if you ask Dennis Sandgate, an archaeologist from British Columbia's Simon Fraser University, Robrokes and Villa's theory is not accurate. He believes that some Neanderthals had tamed fire, emphasis on the sum. In light of that evidence, for him, to say that Neanderthals had knowingly made their own fires was a bit much. Archaeological evidence gathered by his team in France showed that some Neanderthal caves had small campfires during the summer, not during winter. This suggests that they brought in fires that occurred naturally due to the heat of the summer season into their homes, but hadn't yet learned how to create it themselves. So, according to Sandgate, the true mastery of fire happened 12,000 years ago. And then, other experts believe that there's no way humans tamed fire just over 10,000 years ago, as hominins at the time needed to cook their food to survive. Every 52 years, the equivalent of a full cycle on the Aztec calendar, the people of the Aztec Empire would carry out what is known as the New Fire Ceremony. The new fire ceremony was done in order to reset the calendar cycle and prevent the end of the world. During the ceremony, all fires in the Aztec Empire had to be put out. Then the priest would start the first fire of the new year at the bottom of the Sun Temple. Special messengers, called runners, would then collect flames from the new fire and share them with the rest of the Aztec people in the empire. The second version of how the ceremony went down is quite intense. In this version, a human sacrifice would be led to a hill in the outskirts of the city of Tenochtitlan, called Huichatlan. There, a priest would cut the victim open and light a fire in his chest. The unlucky fellow would then have to be consumed by the fire entirely, and it would be this fire that would be the new source of light for the people of Tenochtitlan. So, when was fire tamed? Eh? sometime between 1.8 million years ago and 12,000 years ago. Which human ancestor started it? 
Truth is, we don't really know. Tracking fire usage in archaeological terms is very hard. Evidence of a bonfire like baked soil or charcoal erode very easily, especially if several centuries have gone by, and items affected by fire are hard to come by. So, as we said, this is a highly debated subject. What's not debatable is that at one point or another, it became essential for human evolution. So, moving on to our favorite part, cooking food. Food and the way we processed it made all the difference for both the cultural and biological evolution of humans. For one, it kind of forced humans to get together during meals, to work as a team to hunt and prepare them, fire or not. What our hominin grandparents didn't know was how cooking their meals with fire would affect their biological development, particularly their brains. The human brain is quite something. Humans possess the largest brain of all vertebrates relative to body size. It contains 86 billion neurons and it uses one-fifth of the calories that we eat when our bodies are at rest. It's also the organ that is behind the creation of everything around us. But in order to develop a brain like ours, humans had to optimize their eating habits. That's where cooking comes in. See, humans need calories and nutrients. When we cook meat or vegetables, we're breaking down and unwinding essential proteins and nutrients that our bodies wouldn't be able to process otherwise, allowing our ancestors to truly make the most out of their meals. On top of helping us harness nutrients, fire also helped early humans detoxify meats and plants as the heat would kill off bacteria on the surface and within the food. An added bonus of cooking was that it saved our body's energy, as it didn't have to defend itself from bacteria, which means more energy for the growth of our noggin. Another positive side effect of fire was warmth and safety. Discovering fire meant we could survive long cold winters, allowing early humans to migrate and move from drier humid areas to more temperate and cold environments. Not only did it keep us from freezing to death, it also kept us from actually being killed by predators that prowled at night. So, what were our ancestors running away from? Let's jump into an explore fact. Humans may be at the top of the food chain now, but before that, we were scurrying away from predators flying above us or going up trees to escape beasts on the ground. Fossils from an early hominin called Olduvai Hominid 8 are proof of that. Olduvai Hominid 8, known as OH8, was discovered in Tanzania in the 1960s by British paleoanthropologist Louis Seymour Bassett Leakey. We only have fossils of OH8's left foot, but researchers discovered it was missing its toe bones and its metatarsals were broken. This kind of injury seemed very similar to the break marks suffered by modern humans when they've been attacked by crocodiles. Another evidence of our lives as prey is the skull cap of Australopithecus paranthropus robustus. Its skull cap is dated at 1.5 million years, and it was discovered in 1949 in Swartkren, South Africa by Robert Broom and J.T. Robinson. If you look closely at the fossil, you can see two 6mm puncture wounds, which after further inspection, were shown to match the mandible of an ancient African leopard. Yeah. But it wasn't just ancient crocodiles and leopards that were out after us. It is believed ancient humans also had to face dangerous reptiles like snakes and Komodo dragons, as well as other big mammals like bears and saber-toothed cats. Good thing those days are over. Unfortunately for the rest of, well, all non-human organisms on Earth, it seems we're going a little overboard with our newfound position at the top of the food chain. If you want to know more about how our existence is putting the rest of the biological world at risk, click the card above to watch our video on the Anthropocene, or potential sixth mass extinction, caused by us, humans. Speaking of hunting, fire also helped us on our way to become predators by first making us into engineers. We're speeding up time a bit here to when humans started using tools to facilitate daily life activities, hunting included. Turns out, fire also played a part in our tool and weapon-making processes. Evidence of this can be found in Laringen, Germany, where a spear that had been used to hunt down an ancient elephant was found to have likely been hardened with fire. 
There is even more apparent archaeological evidence supporting fire at another archaeological site in Schoningen, Germany. But, according to a 2015 report published in the Journal of Human Evolution, analyzed features and artifacts present no convincing evidence for human use or control of fire. Authors of the study believe that the culprit behind the seemingly burnt artifacts was actually just chemical reactions to water exposure and decomposition. So, there goes that. As we said, fire is a tricky thing to track. However, a 2017 study conducted in Kubi Flora, Kenya, where evidence of fire was found in the late 60s and early 70s, might be the most legitimate to date. The researchers participating in the study uncovered and picked up roughly 5,000 artifacts in the area which they then took back to their labs for further testing. The team used infrared spectrometry to examine around 800 bone fragments and found that 40 had been burned and roughly 80 of them might have been close to a fire. There is also evidence that the fires found in the area were not accidental or caused by natural fires, as it seems they had been burning for hours at a time. But fire didn't just help us make tools to hunt down prey. It also helped us create art and other daily life tools by allowing us to make pottery. Without fire, pottery would just be, well, wet dirt. But it was through fire that we began to make the earliest forms of more sophisticated utensils, such as vases, cups, and jars. It also was a way for humans to develop their more artistic side even further. Actually, let's jump into an explore fact. This is the Venus of Dolni Vestonice. She is the oldest ceramic human statuette found to date. This tiny Venus is 4.4 inches tall and 1.7 inches wide, and she is thought to have been made between 29,000 to 25,000 BCE. The small statue was unearthed in 1925, along with other ceramic figurines of bears, lions, mammoths, among other animals. Her large breasts and hips could be alluding to her fertility. It was also because of fire that we didn't have to wait around until the sun came up again to be productive. Not only that, but it made us more active in the daytime too, as our circadian rhythms adjusted to this new source of light. Our use of fire as a source of light would become the reason why inventors like Alessandro Volta, Joseph Swan, Thomas Alba Edison, and Nikola Tesla would scramble about trying to find different ways of harnessing electricity in order to evolve from fire-fueled lamps. Fire also played an enormous role during the Industrial Revolution as transportation evolved from being human and animal-powered to machines being powered by steam and combustion. For better or for worse, fire rapidly became the fuel behind most of our energy source nowadays. You know, petroleum, natural gas, and coal. Agriculture, again, for better or for worse, also benefited from fire. One of the earliest forms of cultivation was slash-and-burn agriculture. Ancient farmers would burn down vegetation in order to make space for new crops, as well as create fertile soil for these crops to grow. Fire today may not represent the same evolution and growth as it used to. In fact, quite a lot of destruction of the natural world lately has been due to fire. Although we humans certainly played a role in this. However, we cannot deny that our growth and evolution is tied to this chemical reaction that we happened upon thousands of years ago. But who knows how long this fire will continue to burn. Thanks for watching Explore Mode. If you liked this video, hit the thumbs up button. Also, check out our playlist if you want to explore more. Make sure to hit the subscribe and bell button so you get a notification whenever we upload a new episode. In the meantime, remember to keep your Explore Mode on.